and welcome to 302 Sports. Nick Allison Jr. alongside my partner for this one, Caitlin Berry. And Caitlin, what a matchup tonight. St. Elizabeth's Vikings, they come in at our 302 Sports rankings at number five, taking on the Ursuline Raiders coming in at number four. Ursuline coming in with a record of five and six. And like we said, they are ranked four in our 302 Sports rankings. And like we said, Ursuline still five and six, but still number four. And that probably many of you are wondering what's up with that. But like we talked about, Ursuline has some of the toughest games on their schedule this season. A very tough beginning of their schedule and overall toughness has them ranked number four. And then St. Elizabeth comes into this one, the home team nine and one as the rent number five ranked team, Kaylin. And tonight, four versus five, it should be a real good one. Yeah, it should. Uh, I was out at the Conrad Caravel game last night. We had a uh, Conrad number three upset Caravel number one for the girls last night. Really great game. We also stayed for the boys game last night, which was also a very um, fun game to watch. Got a lot of energy out there last night, and especially they had four games yesterday at Caravel, so we had a pretty packed crowd yesterday. So I'm excited to see them. Last time I saw both of these teams play was in the Diamond State Classic. Uh, you were here with me, so we'll see how they've improved since then. Yep, very true. We get another glimpse of these two teams, both playing the Diamond State Classic a couple weeks ago. Ursuline, one and three in their last four games. Some tough games we talked about earlier. St. Elizabeth's three and one coming to this one, including a 65 to 32 win over St. Mark's in their most recent affair. Mayo had 14, Lee 15, and Henry 14 in that one. And Ursuline, their last game, they had a big win, 63-47 over Howard. Connolly had 24 and Dorsey 9. So we're going to take a quick break for the National Anthem, and we'll be right back for the start of this one. All righty, Caitlin. We are almost set to get underway here. Should be a nice, fast-paced game tonight uh, from both teams. You know, I've seen St. E's play for the past couple times, but I have seen them, like I said, like at the Classic, but I've been keeping up with them, and I've also been keeping up with Ursuline. Um, speaking of Ursuline, Adriana Hahn, who used to go there for she goes to Villanova now she just the other night scored her a thousandth career point so congratulations to Adriana representing the Raiders at the next level and now we're about set here to tip off from the live from the St. East Center Ursuline and St. Elizabeth's number four versus number five and we are underway as the tip goes right to St. E's Ward Mayo couldn't get it to go on the drive now, so here comes Ursuline. Ursuline, five and six on the air, coming in at number four in our 302 Sports Girls basketball rankings. Pretty nice crowd here tonight. Got a. Yeah, I was going to say, Kim, <laughs> this place is jam packed. <laughs> Very true, only a few spots left. This 
especially on our side over here as Ward Mayo comes up with the seal. The pass up ahead, and that's going to be finished by Alexis Lee. There's two of the Vikings' stars right off the bat. Ursuline gets it down low, no good. Rebound to Lee. And she quickly gets it up ahead. But there's going to be the walk, so the turnover for the Vikings. Ursuline gets the ball back. A minute in, 2 nothing lead here early for St. Elizabeth's. Your number five ranked team here in our 302 sports rankings. Three and one, the last four for the Vikings. One and three for the Raiders. As this three is going to be launched and good. And good for Maggie Connolly. Connolly getting it started here early. We know she can score. And she knocks down her first triple. And that gives Ursuline a 3 2 lead. Here's kind of the matchup Ward Mayo and Connolly. Both fantastic players as Ward Mayo tries to go behind the back. Back into the hands of the Vikings. Julie McCarran looking to run a play for the Vikings. See if they're able to score here. So here's McCarran. Ward Mayo going to come off the screen, but she's still deed up. They get it to Hines on the wing. Gets it back to Mayo. Now she's got some space. McCarron's going to launch the three from the that wing, and that's good. good. So both teams coming off, knocking down their first triples, and a 5-3 game here a minute, two minutes in. Nice clean shot by McCarron. So you can probably hear the crowd in the background already. The defensive chance starting here for the Vikings, as they are the home team. So here's Connolly up top. That was an open man. That's a mid-range jump shot from the foul line. And that's good. Number 20, Courtney Brown, knocks down the mid-range jumper. And they're shooting and they're scoring here early, Kaylin. Yeah, you're right. And now we got a tie game with about 5.07 to go. So 5-5. Five to five. Both teams starting out pretty well, shooting the ball well from the field early as Ward Mayo holds it on the wing. Ward Mayo coming off the screen. She's got space. Connolly on defense. She kicks it back out to McCarron for another three. And that's going to sail over the top of the backboard. So that's going to be out of bounds and head to the Raiders. Nice ball movement by St. East there. Uh, only time that I saw them start dribbling the ball was when they're either trying to pass or go to the lane. So I thought they did a really good job on that. So now here comes Ursuline. 4.38 now remaining here in the first quarter. That ball's going to be off the knee of Dorsey. McCarron's going to dive for it, but a little too aggressive as she gets called for the foul. That'll be our first foul of the game. It's going to be on McCarron. So Ursuline to inbound, tied here with 4.27 left in the first quarter. Connolly going to go off the screen. That's going to be poked out by Mayo from behind, and now here she comes. In transition, going to take it herself off the glass. No good. And Connolly with the rebound, but she'll get fouled. And that'll be Ursuline Ball. So Ward Mayo able to get the steal, unable to finish on the other end. So some subs here for the Vikings. Number 30, Rory Saskowski. Siskowski. I think I got that right. Yeah, sounds good to me. I always get the hard names. <laughs> and just one step too many there for Abigail. There's Zidlow. Russia Zidlow. Russia Zidlow. <laughs> there you go. Trying to figure that out before <laughs> the game. So after the Raider turnover. Here's Ward Mayo and the Vikings, 5-5, 353 remaining. Hines coming off the screen. She'll pass up on the shot, but not this time. She'll launch that one, and that's that nothing but net. Good for Lauren Hines. 
Getting the crowd into it early. Another triple for the Vikings. Their second, and here's Connolly. With some space, gets into the lane, lays it up with the left hand. No good, but they're gonna get Ward Mayo on the foul. So Connolly will step to the line for a pair. So eight to five after that three by Hines. The Vikings lead the Raiders here in the first quarter, about halfway through. First one is good. And second one, be good for Maggie Connolly. Two for two from the line. So now one point game after the Connolly free throws. That three is launched from Hines in the corner. Excuse me. No good. That was Ariana Henry. Now Ursuline with the rebound. As Connolly calls out the play. Tony Brown up top. They get it back in the hands of Connolly, who's looking for some space. Ward Mayo is going to be on her. So they'll still reset Connolly up top by herself as she quickly hands off to the wing. And now she's going to try to post up Mayo. They lofted their nice cut. That's going to be tipped out of bounds. It's a good cut there by Allison Olmstead. Almost able to feed that pass in there, but it's going to be tipped out of bounds. Ursula really slowing their offense down here to look for some nice layups, I believe, in the lane for them. So here's the inbound. They get it to Connolly. She left hand, one handed pass inside. Unable to finish is Courtney Brown. And we're going to have a foul under the basket. Great look there from Connolly. She slung that in there with one hand. Courtney Brown is unable to finish. And we got a sub for Ursuline, Anna Edluski. I hope I'm getting all these names right. I always get the hard names, high school, college, you name it. So the Vikings now have possession up and run with 2.28 to play as they quickly get it ahead. It's Lee, Lee to the baseline. That jump shot is good. Nice little clean teardrop by Rory Sosowski. There she is. She knocks down the jumper, and now the lead at three, 10 to seven, two, 11, and ticking here in the first quarter. As Connolly thought about it, a little hesitation, great pass down low to Brown, and a little bit of a late whistle there, but it was a foul, and they will call it. And that'll send Courtney Brown to the line, 203 left in the first quarter, and the Vikings holding a three-point lead. Courtney Brown will go up to the line for two. The first one does not go. So the second for Brown is good. So 10 to eight, that ball's gonna be tipped, almost stolen by Allison Olmstead. But it'll sail out of bounds and stay with the Vikings. Saini's leading by two with a minute and 59 to go. So here's Ward Mayo having a great year for the Vikings. We got to see some of her at the Diamond State Classic and she was very impressive to say the least. She can do it all, she's got the handle, she can score, plays good defense. And that ball gonna stay with the Vikings as the Vikings hold still a two-point lead, 138 remaining in the first quarter as they'll inbound. That inbound's gonna land in the hands of Ward Mayo with a crossover, gets back in the paint, throws it up there, a little too strong off the rim. And now here come the Raiders. Great pass down low and finished by Olmstead, but what a pass by Lauren Dorsey. He was able to bounce past that in there on the cut for the basket. And now we're all tied at 10. Ward Mayo around the back, dishes it back to Henry. Henry Long on the shot attempt. Rebound, Alexis Lee, and one. That's gonna be good. 
turning garbage into gold. My man Mark Zumoff, <laughs> 108 to play, and now Alexis Lee heads to the line with a chance to complete the old-fashioned three-point play. And that one is no good for Lee. Sainese continues to be up by two with a minute to go. So here's Connolly up top for the Raiders. She's their play initiator. Into the hands of Brown now on the wing. Tries to get the cutter down low. That's Dorsey. But it's going to be deflected out of bounds by Siskowski. And it'll stay with the Raiders. Speaking of Dorsey, she's only a ninth grader. Seen some big plays out of her early in this one. As they find, or excuse me, try to get the ball to Connolly on the cut. Ward Mayo didn't agree with the fact that she took it out of bounds, but it'll stay with the Raiders. So Ursuline to inbound. And they shoot it back out to Connolly. This is a matchup we'll be paying attention to all night. Ward Mayo and Connolly, two of the top players in the state. Is that ball's gonna be stolen? And now here come the Vikings in transition. Hines. Nice. Off the Hits glass. off the glass. And right back at it, the Raiders, the Raiders get right down the court and answer. Courtney Brown. 14 to 12 though, Vikings still up by two as Ward Mayo goes, tries to lay it off the glass. But we'll have a blocking foul, looks like she'll get to the line. So pace picking up here a little bit. Saint E's still leading by two. And Mayo's gonna go up to the line for a pair. So here is Bernina Ward-Mayo, and she's not good on that one. She's struggling a little bit here early in the first quarter. 11.8 seconds remaining. She'll have another one. A chance to go one for two from the line for Ward-Mayo, and she does. St. is now leading by three as Mayo will take a breather on the bench and... Naya Pulliman is coming in for her. So here's Connolly with six seconds. She can beat the buzzer. She can shoot from there. And that's no good, a little long. And that'll do it here for the first quarter. So after one, the home team, the St. Louis Vikings, leading Ursuline 15 to 12. We'll be right back here on 302 Sports after this. No matter where you are in life, at every stage, we are here for you. For all of life's big moments and everything in between. After all, that's what families are for. We promise to make a positive difference in your financial life and go beyond the norm. Be a part of the Dover Federal family. Local people, local decisions, Dover Federal Credit Union. No matter where you And welcome back to 302 Sports. Nick Allison Jr. alongside Caitlin Ferry, Jason Winchell, Nick Halliday up top on the camera. And Caitlin, a great first quarter. We knew this was going to be a really, really exciting matchup. Number four, Ursuline, number five, St. E's. And the Vikings with a three point lead, 15 to 12 after one. Yes, I do agree. And, you know, coming into this second period here, I think they're going to shift gears even more and turn it up a notch. So. I expect to see a lot of outside shooting this time and um, a lot of aggression to the basket from both sides of the teams. So both teams taking the floor here to start the second. The Vikings with a three-point lead. Both teams shooting the ball decently well in the first quarter. We've seen a couple triples from the Vikings, a couple from the Raiders as well as Connolly has it on the wing. She's going to pull up right in the three-point line, knock down the deep two. And now one point game. So Hines now on the wing for the Vikings, feeds it to Ward Mayo. She's gonna use the screen, dish it back out. 
So Vikings trying to move the ball around here. Trying to feed it down low. They do somehow, Lee's able to gather that on the entry pass and finish with two. Almost came up with the steal. It's now 17 to 14 with 7.08 to go here in the second period. So Arsenal gonna work this ball around. Looking for some open spaces here. The Vikings not giving up much. As Connolly has some room, she's gonna let that three fly. No good. But a nice offensive rebound there from Anna Olszewski. Has the Raiders with another possession. And they quickly get it to Connolly to reset. 6.30 to play, 17 to 14. Connolly with the dish. The open for three, no good. Is Olmstead rebound to the Vikings? Ward Mayo again tries to get in the paint, stripped, gets it again, but then it's going to get blocked down low. Nice block there by Kaylee White. And still, Ward Mayo still struggling to put the ball in the hoop here early. We got number 10, Abigail Osidlo. I think I said it right, checking in for Ursula. So again, the ball in the hands of Maggie Connolly. Three-point lead for the Vikings. Six minutes remaining in the first quarter as she tries to bounce it into the post to try to find Kaylee White to no avail. It'll be a turnover. So the Vikings get the ball back. So they feed it down to Lee in the post again. Turnaround jumper is close, but no good. Ward Mayo fights for the rebound. And he's going to put it back up and get it to go. Great second chance point effort there by Mayo and the Vikings, and they convert. And their lead now stands at five. Connolly thought about it, but instead drives up with the left hand. No good. That ball is going to be tipped but out of bounds and we'll go back to the Vikings. So Connolly scoring early in the first quarter, but both Connolly and Ward Mayo really struggling to score like they usually do. Yeah, number 25, Maxine String checking in for us. And we also had number 14, Lauren Dorsey checking back in for UA. But it was probably a point of emphasis in practice to limit those two girls is that Dorsey comes up with the great steal and she's now going to take the shot from the baseline, no good and now Ward Mayo has it, she's going to have it she's got some girls in front of her pass to the baseline up and no good Shiskowski can't get it to go Henry the rebound, the toss up, no good and an over the back foul called on Ward Mayo she's not happy about it but it'll give the ball back to the Raiders going to be her second foul. She's going to be taken out of the game and Pullum is going to be checking back in for her. So be sure to keep out for that as Wood Mayo heads to the bench. Two fouls getting a breather. 4.43 remaining here in the first half. Vikings up by five. We'll see if that gives Connolly some leeway on the offensive end. As she fires the pass down low. Dorsey comes up with it off the glass. No good but does draw the foul so she'll get to the line. will be stepping up to the line for two. And as you said earlier, just a freshman. Unable to get the first one to go. But she's looked pretty good early. Some great passes, great on the defensive end. And now in the score sheet, as she buries the second free throw. And now the Vikings are gonna push it the pace right here to start. As the lead is cut down to Four, and that ball is going to be thrown away. Dorsey tried to run it down. And in the process of that, ended up touching it before it went out of bounds, so it's actually going to stay with the Vikings. 
So what we thought would be a Vikings turnover ends up resulting in getting them the ball back with 4-14 remaining, up by four. That ball's gonna be blocked as Henry tried to go up with it in the paint. But the Vikings will get the ball out of bounds. They'll be able to inbound here under the basket. Hines gonna launch the deep three in and out. Almost got it to go, but who else? Lee, and she reels in another board and lays in another basket off the second chance opportunity. She's been great. She's been getting a really nice, good, ooh. Connolly goes up for the three. And that one's good. What I was saying was Lee's been doing that all night, going for the rebounds and getting the putbacks on them and scoring some points. Yep, she's been turning garbage into gold, but as soon as that basket went in, Connie Lee answers right away with her basket. And now just a three-point lead, silencing that crowd just as they were getting more and more into it. 21-18 to 18 with 3.24 here to go before halftime. Here's just Kowski, gets it back to Henry over to Hines, and now they're gonna reset here and run a play. As we tick down to three minutes, here's Pulliam over to Siskowski. Here's Hines on the drive, back to Pulliam baseline. Hines, um, excuse me, Lee with another offensive rebound. Garbage into gold. She's just on fire tonight. Somebody's going to have to get down and dirty in the post for the Raiders to stop her as Connolly launches another three. No good, but the Raiders get the offensive board. And a travel, so they'll turn the ball over. But Alexis Lee with Ward Mayo on the bench has been great. Maxine String will be taken back out. And we have number... I can't see, there we go, number 13, uh, Kylie White checking in for UA. So more second chance points coming for the Vikings. The lead now stands at five with 223 remaining. Let's see if they try to get the ball to her or if they just keep shooting and letting her get the rebound. That's just Kowski's gonna drive baseline. William gonna try the mid-range jumper a little short Gets her own rebound. Fake pass. And she and then gets in there to make that shot. You know, that's exactly what you need to do. You need to follow your shots and then go up again. Oh, she faked the little baseline pass. The defender went and then she found herself with some room. She was able to lay it in. Now here's Connolly on the drive. Left hand is good off the glass and the foul for Connolly. As she'll head to the line for a chance for the three-point play. You're always finding Connolly on the floor. No matter where she is, all the shots she takes, she's always aggressive, always going for the ball, always looking for the foul. And, you know, it benefits her because she can make her foul shots, and now she has a chance at a three-point play. She is their play initiator, their scorer, their leader. And she'll step to the line with a chance to complete the three-point play. No good there, though. Got a violation. Have a violation. Number 21, Pullman. So what are the odds, Caitlin, she misses two free throws in a row? Hmm. Uh, Don't want to give her a second chance. I that's think she'll make sure. this one. But she will get one here as there's a lane violation. So, And that one is good. You probably could have guessed that. That free throw will go. Three-point play complete. And now Ursuline find themselves down four with 144 to play. But the Vikings, they're really pushing this pace. Vikings up by four with a minute 35 here to go. And... That three long is long. shot. What? Rebound to leave again. And we've got the ball all over the place down there, but we're going to have a foul call. Lauren Hines will be going to the line for two. But in the midst of all that havoc down there, another offensive rebound for Alexis Lee. Excuse me. So she's still battling down there and. That'll be Pullum going to the line for two. First one, no good. It smells really good in here. It smells like mac and cheese. 
I don't think we have mac and cheese. It's because these players are out here Maybe cooking. I'm just really hungry. <laughs> so here's Pulley. Cheese. <laughs> and she knocks down the second. So now a four point lead. 26 21. At number 22, Whitney Greenwich Cassidy checking in for Ursuline. So now walks up Connolly, 26 21. Let's see what Ursuline can do here with 113 remaining. The pass outside, that three is going to be up and no good by Abigail Rishizudlo. Rishizudlo, excuse me. And now here come the Vikings with a minute to play here now in the first half. That shot's going to be up and Good, Ariana Henry buries the baseline jumper. 28 to 21 with under a minute here to go. There was some talk about whether she'll be able to go today. But she's out there and she's scoring. As Ursuline looking to answer, mid-range jump shot, no good again. That's Reggie Zidlow. And now 30 seconds, it looks like the Vikings have a chance here if they want to hold for the final shot, up seven. With 25 seconds and winding down at the half. They tried to feed Lee in the post. That ball is going to be stolen. So now the Ursuline with a chance here to score before the half. 20 seconds now under as they're down seven. So just six seconds left, five seconds. Connolly's calling for it. She launches the deep three and good. That was going to be good. We had a lot of plays of the week, so, and, uh, you know, I think that's going to be one of them. So sh she's going to be a candidate. And that will do it for the first half. What a way to end the first half for the Raiders. 28-24 at the end of the first half. St. E's does still maintain a four-point lead as we head to the locker room, and we'll be right back after these messages. stage we are here for you for all of life's big moments and everything in between after all that's what families are for we promise to make a positive difference in your financial life and go beyond the norm be a part of the dover federal family local people local decisions dover federal credit union life's too short to hate your home Remodel your home with the pros voted Delaware's number one home improvement company. Ferris Home Improvements has something for every homeowner at their new showroom on a corner of Kirkwood Highway and Harmony Road in Newark, Delaware. Explore products and layouts with the area's top designers. Touch and feel products that inspire your dream space. Ferris Home Improvements pride in the details make them the area's best in roofing, windows and doors, siding, decks, kitchens and bathrooms. Want a professional no pressure remodel? Go see the best at the Big Shamrock on Kirkwood Highway. Ferris Home Improvements, quality workmanship from a neighbor you can trust. The Hadley Group is your local real estate resource. Brian Hadley joined Patterson Schwartz & Associates in 2005. In 2013, Nicole Flora joined Brian, followed by Emma Burnett and Grant Jepp in 2014. That's when the Hadley Group was formed. 
Patterson Swartz Associates offer you exceptional knowledge of local market conditions and a commitment to represent you honestly and professionally. So for your next purchase or sale, think The Hadley Group. Visit our website at thehadleygroupre.com. The Hadley Group is yours. Have a seat wherever you like. Hooters of Newark is located at 136 Astro Shopping Center, Newark, Delaware. Come in day or night to watch your favorite teams and sports on our many TVs. It's a great, fun-filled environment that is kid-friendly. Our craveable food menu has all the appetizers, burgers, salads, tacos, seafood, you name it, as well as our world-famous Hooters Wings, which are the official wings of 302sports.com. Hooters of Newark is located at 136 Astro Shopping Center, Newark, Delaware. Come in day or night to watch your... Hi, I'm Scott Cameron from Solo Concepts. Solo Concepts is an award-winning restaurant group on the culinary coast with 10 locations. We're a chef-driven group. Come check us out. See you soon. Solo Concepts believes in the vision of our founder, Matt Haley. Cook beautiful, simple food, develop the people we work with, and make the world a better place. Soto Concepts on the culinary coast with 10 locations from Lois, Delaware to Fenwick Island. Come check us out. As a military wife, I love helping our airmen and their families with financial tools to help provide financial stability. I promise to make a positive difference in your financial life, from helping you to lower your payments to discovering ways to help you save for your children's future. From the needs of college students and first-time auto buyers, I promise to identify and take ownership of your needs. Local people, local decisions, Dover Federal Credit Union. As a military wife, I love helping our airmen and their families with financial tools to help provide... Sure, and began his career in home finance in 2002 as a mortgage consultant. Since 2002, Brian has helped over 1,000 home buyers achieve their dreams of owning a home. Brian's knowledge of current market conditions and his detailed evaluation of buyers' finances ensures that each buyer will receive the best mortgage to fit their needs. Brian is often commended on how efficient and effortless he makes the mortgage process for everyone from first-time home buyers to investors to experienced buyers. For the loan that fits you, contact Brian today. Mr. Italian began his career in home finance in 2002 as a mortgage consultant. Since Unique Image opened for business in Wilmington, Delaware in 1979 with one focus, wowing our customers with great products and even greater customer service. 30 years later, we are still doing exactly that. Whether you're looking for marketing tools to promote your business, gifts for your employees or clients, or planning a special event, we're here with a voice of experience to help you every step of the way for your complete satisfaction. Visit our new showroom in the Mill Creek Shopping Center. 4577 Kirkwood Highway. Unique image, you envision, we create. Unique Image opened for business in Wilmington, Delaware in 1979 with one focus, wowing our customers with great products and even greater customer service. 30 years later, we are still doing exactly that. Whether you're looking for marketing tools to promote your business, gifts for your employees or clients, or planning a special event, we're here with a voice of experience to help you every step of the way for your complete satisfaction. Visit our new showroom in the Mill Creek Shopping Center, 4577 Kirkwood Highway. Unique image, you envision, we create.
And welcome back to 302 Sports. Nick Alessandrini alongside Caitlin, Berry, Caitlin Ferry for our <laughs> big matchup of the week. We have number four, Ursuline, coming in here at the St. East Center, taking on the home number five ranked St. Elizabeth Vikings. And Caitlin, very great first half, 28-24, a four-point lead for the Vikings, back and forth. But St. East kind of maintained a little bit of a lead the whole way through. Yes, very true. I think they picked up the pace a little bit. They're leading by four right now. They came out the first half, and they were really aggressive. They were going to do the basket, and especially Lee, um, who we were talking about earlier in the game, she's just been putting putbacks left and right, rebounds all the time. I have to call her the garbage woman because she is turning garbage into gold down there. Second <laughs> chance points are through the roof for her. She's been hustling down, reeling in rebounds. But on the other side, we look to Ursuline. They're down four. And their star, Maggie Conley, she's been on point tonight, as we expected her to be, 16 points in the first half. And, but the big storyline here, she needs just six points to get her 1,000th point. So six points, and she reaches 1,000 points for her career, an incredible accomplishment that she has a chance to reach here in the second half. So keep an eye out on that, just six points for Maggie Connolly, and she'll be a 1,000-point scorer. I think she's going to do it with two threes, like right, right at the bat when we get here in the third period. Wouldn't shock me if she had 16, like we said, in the first half. I 16 just, of their 24. She's just shooting all the time and making everything. I can't keep up with her. <laughs> so we'll see if St. East can keep up with her here in the second half. As the matchup, Ward Mayo kind of headed to the bench with foul trouble late in the first half. She's back out there now. And let's see what kind of adjustments both teams here have made at the half as we are underway here in the third quarter. From the St. East Center, that shot no good for McCarron. And now Ursuline, oh. Oh, the ref just fell, no. And Ursuline here with the Maggie Connolly now gonna have it on the wing. So 28-24, the Vikings four point lead. As here's Lauren Dorsey. Trying to find the cutter. That ball's gonna be tipped by Ward Mayo into the hands of Alexis Lee. And now she's out on the break. Tries to hand it to Ward Mayo though. Ursuline was there, Connolly on the ground, and it'll have a tie up. A little bit of the commotion down there on the floor. So after the jump ball, it will head to Ursuline. No one has scored yet, so. So one minute here into the third quarter. 28-24, both teams looking for their first basket of the second half. As Dorsey's gonna cross over, get into the paint. The dish outside, it's gonna be pump faked and launched up there. But no good, that's Rizzo But here come the Vikings. Henry with the spin move. The pass is going to be stolen as she was looking for Ward Mayo, but she somehow steals it back, but can't get the shot to fall. She's still struggling to put that ball in the hoop tonight. Something we're not used to seeing. So here's Maggie Connolly on the wing. She's going to drive, dish Dorsey in the corner for three. Give that her all three of those. Good. You know, it's great her being so young. She gets to grow throughout her entire high school career. Already seeing time on this talented Ursuline team as a freshman. As she buries the triple from the corner. Now the lead just at one, 28-27. St. E's over Ursuline here in the third quarter. Ward Mayo gonna launch that three, and that's good. We've been looking for her, and there we found her, 4-3. It'll be 31 to 27 with 5.35 here to go. And she answers the Dorsey three right back. And now Connolly wants three of her own, and she's got it. Make that 19 for Connolly, and she only needs three more for her 1,000th point. So you're halfway, your prediction is halfway through. Another three, and she will be at her 1,000th point. But it's rain in threes here to start the third. As Ward Mayo gonna launch another one, and, and it's good. It's gonna be good. Nothing but nylon for Ward Mayo. as She's starting to catch fire here in the third quarter. Back to back triples, and the lead back to four for the Vikings. Five minutes to play. I'm not gonna be surprised if Connolly pulls up right here. 
She's gonna drive, tries to dish it to Dorsey. Now they're gonna move the ball. Courtney Brown with the pump fake. And she's gonna turn it over as she might have taken an extra step there. So the ball back to the Vikings. So they're coming out and scoring to start the second half. 34-30, 4.45 to play. Here's McCarron. Henry back to McCarron. That ball's going to be tipped out of bounds. It'll stay here. It'll be 30-34 with 4.36 to go. So like we said, Maggie Connolly just three points away from reaching her 1,000th point as she knocked down a triple moments ago. McCarron going to line up a three of her own. That's a little long rebound to Connolly. And now she's out on the break. Bounce pass to the corner to Dorsey. She'll step back for three, in and out. But she almost got her own rebound. There's a battle down low. And That's it'll head back to the Vikings. A little bit of some pressure here from Ursuline as St. E's quickly gets the ball ahead. That's a three from the corner, no good. Rebound to Alexis Lee, garbage into gold, no good. But she does get to the line. You Another know, offensive rebound for Alexis Lee. <laughs> we've been Lee. talking about that all night, and now she gets a chance to make these two points. Three points, I should say. I always think foul shots are two points. <laughs> so they have had no answer for her in the paint in terms of rebounding the ball as she knocks down her first free throw. She looked a little surprised herself that she made that one as it went off the front of the rim. So now the lead at five, a chance to stretch it to six. And she does, two for two from the line for Alexis Lee. And she continues her great game for the Vikings. At number 22, Greenwich Cassidy checking back in for Ursine. So now the lead at six. As the ball in Connolly's hands, Ward Mayo going to go over top the screen. Don't want to give her any free space to shoot. But she gets into the lane and floats it in with the left hand. So she can beat you from the perimeter or on the drive. One point away from 1,000. Great call there, Kaylin. We're on our Maggie Connolly 1,000 point watch. She's now just one point away as Hines launches a triple. No good. Rebound Alexis Lee. Mid-range <clears throat> jumper. Another offensive board for the Vikings, but no good. McCarron again. Three offensive rebounds on that possession for the Vikings. And she will not be shooting two. They called it on the floor. But they are battling down low. St. Lee's has been hustling around this whole game. Yep, and right under the basket there, they had a lot of second chances, but they weren't able to put it in the basket. Alexis Lee, the open foul line jump shot is good. Not only good from under the basket, but a little teardrop shot. Showing little dumper out there. Game here, Kaylin, showing off all aspects of her game as she continues to hurt the Raiders. And now here's Connolly on the driving dish. Dorsey wanted oh. the three, might have got away with a walk. But now Connolly's got it back. She's looking to shoot. She wants it, and Drives she's going to get it. And one for Maggie Connolly, and not just an N1, Kaylin, but her thousandth point for Maggie Connolly on the drive, and what a way to get your thousandth point, the N1 foul. So a chance for the three point play. And now Maggie Connolly is in a thousand point score. Congratulations to her on her thousandth point. I see the flowers and the balloons and the signs already. And she's gonna, and she's gonna get a hug from her teammates, some flowers. What an incredible accomplishment for Maggie Connolly. A thousand point score for the Ursuline Raiders. And the crowd gonna show her some love here. Much deserved. So let's see if Ursuline can take some of that momentum they just got from Maggie Connolly's 1,000 point and see if they can turn it into a run here as they find themselves down four with three minutes to go here in the third quarter. Ursula was just waiting for that. We were too. Uh, congratulations to her. She 
you know, is going to be going up to the line to continue to make that three-point play. So let's see if she can do it. So now Connolly will step to the line. A chance to add on top of her a thousand points. And, and she, she does. does. So now just a three point game, 38-35 St. E's leading Ursuline. McCarran with a little nice hook pass to the baseline. That's gonna be in and good. Ariana Henry, another baseline jumper for her. Ursuline trailing by five. 40 to 35, 244 to play. Here's Dorsey, she's got some room. Tries to feed it back to the paint, no good. Stolen from McCarran. She gets it up ahead to Mayo, but stolen back by Reggie Zidlow. And now Connolly in open space. Corner three is no good. Rebound to Connolly. And tries the one hand pass, but that's going to be stolen. And now here come the Vikings. Hines. She'll feed it toward Mayo, and now she'll reset the offense. 2-10 and winding down in the third quarter, 40-35. to 35. Under two minutes to go. Crossover, drive, dish, nothing there. And she'll take it back up top as they try to find an opening in this Ursuline defense. They still have a five point lead, 144 remaining in the third quarter. As Lauren Dorsey will step out on her. Crossover, what a move by Ward Mayo. And she'll get fouled, she'll head to the line as we shows off some of her handles there. Little crossover and step back, had the defender on skates and she'll head to the line. Ward Mayo come out real hot in the second half. She knocked down two triples earlier in the third quarter. Speaking of hot, it was like 50 degrees today, which, you know, pretty recently <laughs> it's been, you know, extremely cold. So I'm happy to get a little bit of a spring weather out here. Ward Mayo unable to get that one to go. Got Rory checking back in for St. E's, and we also got number 21, Taylor Brooks, checking in for Ursuline. So, looking to make one of two here is Ward Mayo, and her second one is up and good. St. E's now leading 41 to 35 with a minute 30 to go in the third period. So, Connolly again off the screen, and that's a deep three for her. In and out, no good. Rebound to Ward Mayo, 120 to play. Vikings lead by six, and she's gonna push the pace. Tries the spin move, and she's gonna be fouled. As she had the spin move in the lane, but got taken out from her feet there, up below her. She was on a merry-go-round, going in circles and circles. So St. E's will inbound after the foul on the floor. 113 to play here in the third. As they get it to her, and she'll bit it back up to Hines. Now 105 and ticking, 41-35, Sainese over Ursuline here, live from the Sainese Center on 302 Sports. As we wind down under one minute to play. Viking's still looking for something. 43 seconds now. As they're gonna be very patient here and executing as they try to get it down low to Lee. But again, they just can't seem to get it to her. As Ursuline has done a good job of preventing that entry pass in the post. And now with 34 to play, 34 seconds left here in the third quarter. Ursuline a chance to cut into the six point lead. So here's Connolly. The thousand point score up and off the glass. But we're gonna have another foul call. 
She's been doing a good job of getting in the paint on that left side and drawing some fouls. And she'll head back to the line with a chance to narrow this deficit. So the first one up and good for Connolly. Got number 21, Pullman, checking back in for the Vikings. So 41-36 now. And make that 37. Two possession game, four point lead for the Vikings. They have it with 22 seconds to play in the third quarter. We'll see if they can add on to it before we head to the fourth. Mayo's gonna get trapped, tries to get it down low to Pulliam, she does, but that ball's gonna be stolen by Connolly and she's got time to work with. Nine seconds now, seven seconds for her. She's gonna drive baseline with five seconds, tries to go off the glass, three, two, one. And that's gonna do it here for us in the third quarter. As St. E's maintains that lead, they lead 41-37 as we head into the fourth quarter. Thanks for joining us on 3 on 2 Sports. We'll be right back after this. Life's too short to hate your home. Remodel your home with the pros voted Delaware's number one home improvement company. Ferris Home Improvements has something for every homeowner at their new showroom on a corner of Kirkwood Highway and Harmony Road in Newark, Delaware. Explore products and layouts with the area's top designers. Touch and feel products that inspire your dream space. Ferris Home Improvements pride in the details make them the area's best in roofing, windows and doors, siding, decks, kitchens and bathrooms. Want a professional no pressure remodel? Go see the best at the Big Shamrock on Kirkwood Highway. Ferris Home Improvements, quality workmanship from a neighbor you can trust. Life's too short. And welcome back to 302 Sports. And thanks for joining us for our fourth quarter here live from the St. E Center, our matchup of the number four Ursuline Raiders visiting the number five ranked St. Elizabeth Vikings. And Kaylin, it's been a great matchup first, or excuse me, the first for the first three quarters, 41-37. St. E's with a four-point lead. Maggie Connolly scored her 1,000th point in this game as well. And the Raiders now just find themselves down four. It's kind of where it's been throughout this whole game, around a four or five-point lead for the Vikings. And now with just one quarter to play, we have a 41-37 game. going to be a Hines three and she cans it. Nice triple there from Lauren Hines to extend that lead to seven. 7.30 now to go, Caitlin. And Connolly wants to answer and, and she, she does. does. How? Like, what? okay. I wonder why she's going to Princeton. This is a battle as Ward Mayo showing off the handles in the backcourt. Gets it up ahead, McCarron's got some space, drives into the defender, and we're gonna have a charge. They're gonna get McCarron for the charge, she's not happy with it, and the ball will head back to the Raiders after the turnover. So a four point game, and now the Ursuline has the ball back. We're gonna have a timeout here, a 30 second timeout from Ursuline, we'll stay here. So Caitlin, a minute in, already the energy in this building is rising, a four point game, 44 to 40. So yeah. we'll see what we got here on tap for the fourth quarter. Some big storylines. Maggie Connolly scored her 1,000th point in this one. Alexis Lee has been fantastic on the boards, especially on the offensive glass. A lot of second chance points for her as well. She's been playing great. Ward Mayo showing off the handles. Some great passes. She's knocked down a few triples as well. All around, it's been a really good game. Uh, we got a whole nother, they, we had a whole nother eight minutes. We got about seven to 10 to go. It's, you know, close game, St. E's being up by four right now. And I think that they really started slowing the pace down and looking for the open cutters because that's, a, that's what they were doing. And over here it benefited them because not only is Lee down there making everything, but she's also getting everything to make more shots. Let's see if she can keep it up as we get this one going. Taylor Brooks coming into the game for Ursuline as what a split of the defenders there, no good from Olmstead. 
So now seven minutes still here to go here in this game. Our number four ranked Ursuline Raiders taking on our number five ranked St. Elizabeth Vikings. And this game has lived up to the hype. It's been close throughout as Connolly gets it over to Brooks. Brooks gonna go off the screen. Brooks just a sophomore. She hands off to Connolly, bounce passes it down low to Dorsey, who couldn't get it to go, but great basketball. Dorsey gets her own rebound, and then Lee's gonna come up with this rebound and she'll get fouled. A good basketball there from Ursuline, just unable to convert in the paint, but a great bounce pass from Connolly. That's Courtney Brown's third foul of the game. So 6.28 left in this game, 44 to 40. The St. Elizabeth Vikings lead the Ursuline Raiders. As that ball is gonna be scooped up from McCarran. She gets in the lane, mid-range base, excuse me, baseline jump shot, no good. And Ursuline comes up with the rebound. Courtney Brown, she quickly hands it off to Connolly. And now you see when they brought Brooks in, they're gonna work, they're working a lot of Connolly off the ball. We'll see if they can get her off some screens or they're trying to free her on cuts to the basket. As Brooks was a nice crossover. Tried to go up for it, but we're gonna have a tie up. And it'll stay with Ursuline. Saney's still leading by four. So Ursuline to inbound, they get it to Connolly. So now under six minutes to play, the lead's still at four. As Connolly goes around the defender, finds an open girl in the corner for three, a little long. Rebound to McCarran, and she's gonna get fouled by Courtney Brown. That's Courtney's fourth. So one more, it looks like she'll check out of the game here. Number 22. Greenwich Cassidy checking in for Courtney as she has four fouls. So a couple empty possessions for both teams here in these last couple. Let's see if they look as they look to get back on the scoring train here. 44 to 40. Ward Mayo up top. As Ursuline rocking a 2-3 zone. Lee, open mid-range jump shot is good. Count it for Ariana Henry, another jump shot for her. She can shoot the basketball, now the lead at six with five minutes to go. They get it back into the hands of Connolly. She's been great all night long. Had a letter. That one's going to be good for her. Can't pronounce the name, but number That's 10. Abby Regisidlo <laughs> with a floater of her own for two. Cuts the lead back to four. With 427 and ticking in this game. Ward Mayo going to try to drive. Hazard crossover to an open Henry. No good. A little long on the three as Hines tried to bank it off of the Ursa player and does so. So it'll stay with the Vikings. Great heads up play. Had a lot of really nice plays out here tonight. A lot of hustle, a lot of being, you know, aggressive. Both teams playing extremely hard. As they try to feed Lee in the paint. McCarron pump fake gets in the paint a little strong on the layup attempt but gets it back and that finishes. That would be good for her. Ursuline down by six now. Yep, Grinch Cassidy didn't want to get the travel call, tried to just get rid of it as she was going to the ground. But right into the hands of McCarron, who was able to finish for two, and off that long miss, the Vikings will get the ball back. And we're gonna have a timeout by Ursuline, a 30 second timeout. So we're gonna stay here, the energy shifting here as St. E's 
now up six, but we're gonna take a quick break and we'll be right back after this. I promise to make a positive difference in your financial life, from helping you to lower your payments to discovering ways to help you save for your children's future. From the needs of college students and first-time auto buyers, I promise to identify and take ownership of your needs. Local people, local decisions, Dover Federal Credit Union. And welcome back to 302 Sports. As we are coming down to the wire here in our game here on Saturday night between the number four ranked Ursuline Raiders and the number five ranked St. Elizabeth Vikings in what has been a great game all game long, Caitlin, as we talked about. So right now Vikings find themselves up six with 3.49 to play. And they'll have the ball as well. A lot of nice hustle out here by St. East tonight, looking for the open girl and, again, putting the ball back through the basket. Henry with space. She's going to take another three. No good. Rebound, Ursuline. So here come the Raiders, 3.30 to play. They find themselves down six. And a chance to cut into that lead right now. As Connolly, excuse me, Connolly, looking for that iso down the right side. Pass it down low to Greenwich Cassidy. Who kept that pivot foot down, but unable to get that one to go is Dorsey. But Connolly going to get the rebound, step right back and shoot the three. No good, rebound to Ward Mayo. Three minutes here to go. Ursuline still is down by six. As St. E's going to slow it down here. As they're going to start to pressure Ward Mayo, but she's got a great handle. As they feed the high post to Alexis Lee. There's a lot of ball moving here right now. They're looking to work the clock down. Absolutely. The Vikings running some clock here. 2.34 now to play in this game. Vikings up six. And the timeout by St. E's as Henry found herself maybe trapped there. So we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back for this conclusion of our game here. 2.30 to play, 48-42, St. E's leads. Real Estate Resource. Brian Hatley joined Patterson Schwartz & Associates in 2005. In 2013, Nicole Flora joined Brian, followed by Emma Burnett and Grant Jepp in 2014. That's when the Hadley Group was formed. Patterson Schwartz Associates offer you exceptional knowledge of local market conditions and a commitment to represent you honestly and professionally. So for your next purchase or sale, think the Hadley Group. Visit our website at thehadleygroupre.com. Hi, I'm Scott Cameron from Solo Concepts. Solo Concepts is an award-winning restaurant group on the culinary coast with 10 locations. We're a chef-driven group. Come check us out. See you soon. Solo Concepts believes in the vision of our founder, Matt Haley. Cook beautiful, simple food, develop the people we work with, and make the world a better place. Solo Concepts on the culinary coast with 10 locations. From Lois, Delaware to Fenwick Island, come check us out. And welcome back to 302 Sports. We are coming down to the wire here at the St. E Center as the number four Ursuline Raiders trail the number five St. Elizabeth Vikings 48 to 42 with just two minutes and 30 seconds to play. The Vikings do have possession up by six. And both teams coming out of that timeout as Ward Mayo with a great crossover dishes out. This is a corner three from Hines in and out. And the rebound to Ursuline, 213. They're down by six. And that's going to be laid in and good. Allison Olmstead on the drive. Ursuline only trailing by four now. We got two minutes left until the final clock. So a four point lead. Let's see what St. E's elects to do. As Ward Mayo going to have the ball, 150 to go. Ursuline looking for a stop. As Ward Mayo drilling up top. And now two people coming out to guard Ward Mayo and she's gonna be wrapped up and draws the foul. So the seventh team foul on Ursuline. That should send Ward Mayo to the line for a one and one. With 1.30 to play. So St. E's up by four. Ward Mayo heads to the line for the one and one opportunity. So some big free throws coming up here for Ward Mayo. 
as she takes a deep breath to go for her first shot. And it's good. Brings their lead to five. And she will go up for her second foul shot. So some big free throws here for Ward Mayo. She misses the second but gets her own rebound. And draws the foul on Connolly. So she'll head back to the line now with the lead at five. Hey, Pat, what do I always say? Foul shots win the game. That wasn't very enthusiastic. So you said one of our big matches we've seen all night long, Maggie Connolly and Renaya Ward-Mayo battling it out, the two guards and two primary ball handlers for these teams. As Ward-Mayo gets that free throw to go. So she'll earn herself another one here. It's getting a little toasty in here, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Six point lead now for the Vikings. A chance to extend that to seven is Ward-Mayo with another shot on the way. And she knocks it down. Seven point lead, 127 to go here. Because that ball is going to be tipped out, but will stay with the Raiders. So 126, Ursuline down seven. And they're going to get Lauren Hines on the wrap up of Maggie Connolly on the inbound. Just their fifth team foul. So they got two to give. Excuse me, one to give. So Connolly going to launch that deep three as soon as she gets up the court. No good, though. In and out. What was close to going down, just no cigar. And that jump ball is going to send the ball back to the Vikings. So seven-point lead for St. E's over number four, Ursuline, with 1.16 to play. As they try to launch it up the court to Ward Mayo. And they're going to get the foul call on Courtney Brown. And she's going to foul out of the game. And the crowd really getting into it here now as St. E's on their way to a big victory. Not over yet, obviously. 115 to play. As St. E's up seven, Ward Mayo steps back to the line. Her third trip to the line, I believe, the last 20 seconds. So she definitely should feel warm from there. And she's going to get a free throw. The one and one, first one is good. So she's knocking down her free throws here to extend that lead to eight, and she'll have another one on the way. Got 115 her to go. And her second is up and good as well. Extends that lead to nine, and St. E's will take a timeout. Looking good here for St. E's right now. You know, I think the entire game they've been calm, cool, and collective, and it's helped them, especially scoring-wise and going up to the line and making the outside shots. A lot of outside shots tonight, and also a lot of shots in the paint, so I don't think Zaney's <laughs> coach can complain tonight in the locker room. Good inside-out basketball by the Vikings for sure. A huge game as well from Alexis Lee, who has been an absolute beast on the boards. And had some great second-chance points for the Vikings. She had a huge game. Ward Mayo scoring a lot of points here in the second half as well. So still a nine point lead for the Vikings. Ursling to inbound with 1.15 to play. And they're going to throw away the inbound pass into the hands of McCarron. And now Ward Mayo has it. She'll get tripped up and head back to the line once again. She's had a phenomenal game tonight. <laughs> So another Ursuline turnover there. That one on the inbound comes at a critical time. And now Ward Mayo will head back to the free throw line with a chance to 
put that lead to double digits. Arsenal will be calling a timeout. And we're going to take a quick break. We're going to step away when we come back. The final minute 11 here from the St. East Center. We'll be right back. Unique Image opened for business in Wilmington, Delaware in 1979 with one focus, wowing our customers with great products and even greater customer service. 30 years later, we are still doing exactly that. Whether you're looking for marketing tools to promote your business, gifts for your employees or clients, or planning a special event, we're here with the voice of experience to help you every step of the way for your complete satisfaction. Visit our new showroom in the Mill Creek Shopping Center, 4577 Kirkwood Highway. Unique Image, you envision, we create. And welcome back here, 302 Sports. We are coming down to our conclusion of this one. Live from the St. E's Center, we have number four, Ursuline here, traveling to take on number five, St. E's, in what has been a close one all the way through as St. E's has started to pull away here in the final minute and a half of this one. They have a nine-point lead as Ward Mayo will go back to the free throw line. Maggie Connolly scored her thousandth point in this one as Ursuline looks to try to come back with a minute 11. But Ward Mayo making that very difficult as she's been great from the free throw line. And she knocks down another. And now the lead at double digits, 54-44. The largest lead of the game. Now the largest lead of the game by 11 with 1.09 to go. That three is up and short. As Ursuline goes for the rebound, they get it. Connolly gonna launch a three now. No good. Ursuline with another rebound. That ball's loose. And it's gonna be tipped out of bounds and stay with the Raiders. Under 50 seconds to play here. St. E's up 11. Again, thanks to everyone who joined us here on 302 Sports. Nick Allison G, Kaylin Ferry, Pat Arianis, Nick Halliday is that corner. Three is good. Brooks, the sophomore, knocks in a triple. 55-47, 35 seconds to play. Yeah, as we have a, another timeout. 33 seconds left here on the clock. So that three by Brooks cuts the lead to eight with 33 and a half seconds remaining. As St. Nees now takes a timeout of their own. Really good game tonight um, by both sides, you know, especially with Maggie, you know, having her career thousandth point today. And then Lee and Mayo, both from St. E's. And just the energy of the crowd out here tonight. There's a lot of heads out here, and I think everyone's excited to be here. Yep, this is definitely a packed gym, a huge crowd here on hand to see this great matchup between two of the top five teams in Delaware. And it's lived up to the hype. And still with 33 and a half seconds remaining, that three puts Ursuline down eight. Still a tough comeback ahead for them. As St. E's also has the ball. But we've seen crazier things happen. Especially in this gym. Yes. So. Only just a few weeks ago. St. E's to inbound and Ward Mayo has it. And that ball is going to be stolen, no, but a foul call on Maggie Connolly after what they thought was an Ursuline steal, but instead Ward Mayo will head back to the line. She may have to change her address. She's been there all quarter. She basically lives at the free throw line. So here she is with another... That being the 10th team foul, she'll have a pair of free throws. And unable to get the first to go. So here's the second one on the way for Ward Mayo. And that one is good. So the lead back to nine. 28 and ticking here in this game. As Connolly trying to make something happen for Ursula, and she's gonna hand it off. Gonna have to get a shot up here quickly. Connolly looking for some space. Great bounce pass down low. 
Almost got the basket to go, but no good. She'll get the fouls. Whitney Grant Cassidy. So she'll head the line for a pair. The clock is stopped. 14.7 remaining. But Ursuline's still down nine. Something that I like right now is Ursuline's not giving up. They, the hustle's been throughout the entire game, and especially rolling into the last you know, 15 seconds of this game, they've really been hustling, so you got to give them credit. That free throw, no good for Grinch Cassidy. As we have a lane violation on Brooks, so that free throw will not count, and St. Eves will take the ball. 14.7 to play, they're up nine. So we'll see if Ursuline fouls here or what, as Lee has it. She gets it to Ward Mayo, and we are at 10 seconds and counting. And she will get fouled. To every other second or two that we were, we've yeah. been seeing her at the line tonight. She has been there at I least wonder, the last five minutes. Yeah, sure. I wonder how many times she's been up to the line. So here she is again, that free throw. Good, that one, didn't even think about it, just let it go. Knocks it down, 10 point lead now, double digits with 8.7, but looks like St. Eves will get this W. They'll have won four out of their last five. This could be a loss for Ursuline, one in four in their last five for the Raiders. But as we talked about, a very tough schedule as Connolly buries a deep triple, but it won't matter as the St. Elizabeth Vikings, number five, beat the number four ranked Ursuline Raiders here at home at the St. East Center, 58 to 50. Big win for the St. Elizabeth Vikings. And what has been a great game, Caitlin. Yes, it has, I do agree. I was excited for this game and you know, coming out here and seeing an, another upset. I saw one last night and you know, another upset out here. It's always fun to see. To Maggie Connolly, a great game for the Ursuline Raiders. She reached 1,000 points. Congratulations to her again from the 302 Sports. But Ward Mayo, Alexis Lee, and that St. Eve's Viking team's too much for the Raiders tonight as they hold on to the victory, 58 to 50. Thanks for joining us on 302 Sports. For Nick Alessandrini, Caitlin Ferry, Pat Garianis, Jason Winchell, Nick Halliday, we'll see you next time on 302 Sports.